Alrighty, folks, let's get straight into our post-debate coverage. Normally, there'd be an intro, but we're not going to do the fancy stuff today. There are no other topics. There is just the debate. So, who won? Throw your comments down there. Who do you think won this debate? I have a clear winner in my head, and I'm honestly not surprised. I thought Kamala came out on top. And the reason I'm not surprised is, one, because people on both sides of the aisle were casting their narratives beforehand. Kamala Harris was not being played up too much by the Democrats. Don't get me wrong. They were saying that she's going to beat Trump, but they weren't saying, oh, it's going to be the greatest performance of her life. They said it's going to be tough. Some of these different rules are not going to necessarily be in her favor. Republicans, most of them wisely did not build up her expectations too much, but they also downplayed her more than I think they, they should have, which is we know that she can debate. Maybe she's not the best debater in the world, but we know that she can very well do it. She's been on that stage with Vice President Pence. She's been on a stage which was much more crowded with many more people. Then again, she did get owned by Tulsi Gabbard. That didn't really pan out well for her back in 2020, but, sorry, 2019, but she is very well capable of putting on that in front of the camera face. And sometimes there were moments when I looked at her and I said, why are you using that face? If you're trying to display something for the viewers at home, is that the face that you want to do? It's a little bit schmarmy sometimes. It was a little bit contemplative, like, hmm, stroking the chin. But overall, there were moments where I was watching and when I was listening. When I was watching, I thought, mm, does, I don't know, he doesn't necessarily look super confident and relaxed and having like a good time. And she does not look like she is taking some of these questions seriously. Now, there are other times where she very well did. I don't think that they were within the crucial moments of the debate, which are normally within the first 20 to 30 minutes. You could see the drop off. I mean, at one point, at the very beginning, the debate on ABC had 2.3 million views. Active viewers is what I was seeing, plus around 500K on M MS, uh, not MSNBC, on NBC. And they were simulcasting it. So that's a lot of people that are paying attention. By the end of the debate, I checked before I left, it was somewhere around 250K. Now, that is a big drop off. And it doesn't necessarily happen in a linear fashion. But even if we assume a linear fashion from about 30 minutes on, because most people, they see what they want to see at the beginning and they get on with their life. I think that she was looking a little bit less than confident in those moments. And then towards the middle part of the debate, she kind of settled in. She was able to bait Donald Trump on certain things, and she was able to have that confident air about her. I also did listen to most, uh, not most, I would say about 25%. I put the phone away just to listen to see if there was a difference. And I think though her verbal tics were still there, where she would say in terms of, or she would repeat certain words, she definitely came away sounding more competent, but not just competent. Because Donald Trump, he had his moments where he had zingers, where he was able to interject and bring up certain points when he pointed out how certain information hasn't necessarily been put out by the media, whether it be on the FBI numbers or it be how they haven't covered certain aspects of his campaign properly. He has had those moments where he can retaliate, he can kind of push back. But overall, she definitely sounded like she was less angry, which I think as I mentioned to somebody else, as I was going through the middle, at the very beginning, in probably the first 30 to 35 minutes, I texted somebody, I'm like, am I crazy or is she winning? And the response was, not going to put this person on blast, the, the response was not necessarily disagreeing, but not necessarily agreeing either. And it occurred to me at that moment that he is playing it the way that he would to his base, which is, he took on the media. His, most of his comments, at least within the first 30 minutes, were not directed at Kamala Harris specifically. They were talking about her, but he was looking at the moderators and he was taking them on. That was most definitely a base play. He is going up against an adversarial media. And I've heard lots of people talk about how the moderators were jumping in. And I say lots of people, I've watched two other streams afterwards that were talking about it. And when they talked, I was like, oh, yeah, 
it's almost as if you repeated what most people were probably thinking. Maybe I should just leave these streams behind. Not to say that they're not adding anything relevant, because then that would imply that I'm not adding anything relevant. But it was just interesting. It was like, oh, yeah, I had those thoughts during the middle of the debate. Good, good to see that other people are paying attention as well. But what I was thinking was that he's playing up to the normal trend, which is it's Donald Trump versus the media. He is going adversarial against them. And what she did brilliantly in the first part of the debate was she repeatedly talked directly to the American people. That fell off towards the end. She started attacking Trump. She was talking to the moderators towards the middle part when she was trying to goad him into reacting a certain way. But during the first part, she constantly said, you at home. This is what we're doing for you. This is what I want to do for you. And the, one of his best moments was when he looked at the very end because she had said throughout the entire thing that this is what we're going to do for the American people. This is what I want. This is my plan. I have a plan. I have a plan. She's repeated that phrase multiple, multiple times. Fair enough. You got a plan. Great. What he said at the end was, if you have a plan and it's so comprehensive, why haven't you done it yet? And this is the commentary that was coming out of the right side of the aisle before going into the debate that I agree would be very, very crucial to making sure that he defines her and puts a, how should I say, not necessarily a cloak or a weight on her campaign, but weighs them down to some degree with a certain perception, which is, that she is not actually, one, she doesn't actually believe what she's saying, otherwise she would have done something, or two, that she is incapable of doing something or actually using the power that she is given by the American people. I think both of those things, by asking the question, what have you done and why haven't you done what you say you want to do, by asking that question and getting a probably not great answer because it is a hard thing to answer. If you are a vice president, you haven't gotten done what you say you want to get done within your next term. And there's not really a good explanation. I don't know if you can necessarily pivot away from that as well as she did on some other issues. When it comes to Ukraine, when it comes to buybacks, she has very, she was very good when saying, both Tim Walls and I are gun owners, so I don't know what you're saying here. And whether or not she had previously said, which there are clips that go around, which she said that she would be in favor of a gun buyback in 2019, you can definitely find them. They're not that hard to find. But the point being that she was able to pivot away from it and not get stuck in the trenches like he did multiple, multiple times. So when he asked that question at the very end, the people who were saying this is the narrative he needs going in, which was make sure you ask why she hasn't done it yet. They were screaming in their chairs. Yes, finally. But it's kind of too late because most of the viewers have dropped off by now. And I was sitting there saying, ah, OK, so he's closing strong, which obviously this was a very prepared statement. And you could tell that a lot of what she was saying was also very prepared. She had her little canned lines. She knew what she wanted to say on most topics. She was very well prepared. I would even say that some of her facial motions, and what I mean by that, or her facial expressions, were practiced. Because it's not as if she just pulled them out in the moment and it was kind of genuine. She repeated the chin-stroking one twice. She repeated the exasperated laughter twice. And let's be clear, when she, was she wasn't actually laughing, but the big choppy smile on her face and her leaning back and kind of j joking or enjoying seeing him say something crazy from her perspective. Uh, both of those happened multiple times and they felt as though she had literally sat in front of a mirror and said, what will look best to the American people? What will look best on camera? So both of them obviously spent a lot of time with different advisors going over how they should go about this debate. And I think that she practiced more. We know that she took a lot of time off of the campaign trail in order to actually practice and have a cohesive and fully engaging sort of practice session, at least from what some of her advisors are saying, or some of the media reports that came out about her preparation. And it feels 
Like he tried. His advisors, at least for Donald Trump, the advisors said, this is what you should avoid. This is what you should not talk about. But sometimes he was just unable to not chase the rabbit. There were certain times where she just threw something out and she knew, she knew because she sat back and did that little chin stroke. She sat back and watched him bite and keep on nibbling, going for the hook. And sometimes he got away without getting hooked properly. And other times the hook went straight into the side of his mouth and he was pulled up right on her reel because she had him locked in. She knew what would make him angry. She knew what would make him frustrated. And she was very good at exploiting that and bringing out the side of Donald Trump that moderates don't necessarily like. The angry, bereft Donald Trump. And I think it will play well for his people because, as I mentioned, he definitely was going up against the moderators and he was in a defensive stance against them. And like I said, there are many people who are going to set the narrative after this that the moderators were coming after him, that they fact-checked him more than they fact-checked her. And some people, and I have to go back and actually double-check this, I believe there were there was one instance where uh, the female moderator actually cut Kamala Harris off and wouldn't let her respond, which if they were truly just in the bag for her, I think they would have let her respond. But I don't disagree that they fact-checked him a lot more than they fact-checked her. I believe they didn't fact-check her once, but I would have to go back and listen to every single part of the footage. Uh, but there were multiple times where he interjected and he was allowed time on the mic and she interjected and she was allowed time on the mic. I think in the future, we need to somehow get rid of the moderators. And I don't necessarily mean that, okay, you can't have any moderator whatsoever, but there needs to be a completely unbiased, non -per I would even say non-person. And you may be thinking, okay, why non-person? Because the people are going to bring in their bias no matter what. And they're going to interject in, I would say, in the wrong places. Sometimes they should have let Donald Trump finish what he was saying, and they should have let Kamala Harris say what she wanted to say and continue the responses back and forth. Sometimes it's going to take you down a wild rabbit hole, but sometimes it's actually going to get both people to be on point and ask about policy. Because there were multiple times where Donald Trump said, what about you? What? How do you feel about this? And Kamala Harris did the exact same thing. Would you pass this? Would you pass that? And the moderators were stepping in and trying to get people back on topic. And no, they actually should have to answer those questions asked by the other person on that stage. Because guess what? The other person on that stage has a vested interest in having them answer one way or another. So they're going to continue to push on it. And the American people have a vested interest in knowing what these people's opinions are. So that is why it's extremely important to sometimes let the dog hunt. You don't just cut it off. Now, I understand if the person's being rude and interrupting all the time, sure, cut it off. But if they are actually pursuing a genuine policy question, go, let them go after it. And I'm sorry if you feel, oh, well, we need to spend all this time on important topics. Guess what? There are certain topics that, yes, we need to spend a certain amount of time on, but we don't need to let that dominate and completely determine how the debate goes because there is a bit of play that needs to be allowed in these situations. You may want to get to a foreign, if you're ABC, you may want to get to a foreign policy segment. You may want to get to an economy segment. You may want to get to a healthcare segment. All these different things are on your docket. But if the two people are going back and forth about foreign policy for a majority of it, then obviously the, either of them believe, and what I mean here specifically, is on the abortion argument. They, had, they went back and forth on the abortion argument. She asked Trump if, that, if he would veto a national abortion ban. And he asked her, at what point is it okay to stop the uh, use of abortions in order to uh, terminate a pregnancy. And both of those questions are extremely important and neither of them wanted to answer it. And if you had let that dog hunt rather than cutting off the conversation, you could actually understand and better help the American the better help the American people to understand the position of the other person. And I feel as though we too often, let the moderators jump in. And the politicians are more than happy to let the moderators jump in because they don't necessarily want to answer those sort of questions. But if that topic takes up more time than you have previously put out for it, then let it 
happen because we want, as an American people, our candidates to not only be forced in certain directions, to actually stand up for what they believe in and pursue the genuine interests of the American people, but also we don't mind if it goes a little bit haywire. I'll be honest, it's probably better ratings if it goes a little bit haywire. You're going to get more clips out of it. You're probably going to get more media attention for it. Now, how do we fix that? I don't necessarily know. I'm not just trying to be overly cynical. Maybe you have some sort of chat mechanism. You have some sort of electronic mechanism, especially with AI nowadays. You include, instead of questions from the moderators, you include like a town hall, questions directly from the people. I think that could be a very interesting way to go about it. It'd be much more engaging. You could actually have the opinions of average Americans in there rather than filtered through the media. But hey, at the end of the day, that's just a random proposal. Because it does matter. It already happened as it happened. ABC had their debate, and Kamala Harris was definitely helped by the moderators to some degree, but that doesn't change the fact that Donald Trump had a bad performance, in my opinion. He needed to stay more disciplined, he needed to stay more on message, and he did not. And though she was smarmy when she was looking at him and side-glancing him for some of his answers, she was still able to get away unscathed. She was able to get away without being fully defined and without having to answer the question, why haven't you done it before? And if you're a Trump fan, those are the two things that you needed. You needed it to be defined. You needed her to be defined and you needed her to have to answer the question, why wasn't it done when you've already had three and a half years? I think on the economy, he was still pretty strong. I think on most other topics, she was able to dip, dive, or dodge away. Yes, that's the name of our game segment that will be coming out actually tomorrow in the podcast that will be coming out after this because this is a special edition. There still will be one story covered uh, later. I guess technically this will probably be going out around midnight, so it will be happening later today. Uh, But she was able to get away unscathed on most other issues except for the economy because they opened straight up with the economy and – the moderators actually asked the question, should people feel as though when they say that Trump had a better economy and that people were doing better during his time, she didn't have a really good response for it. He could have cap- capitalized on that a little bit more. But overall, if that's what people walk away from, only the economy argument, I think Trump walks away good on this one. If anybody paid attention past the first 20 minutes and they're going to see all of these clips coming out afterwards, but... That's not necessarily as important as watching it firsthand and having a a first impression that is not necessarily beneficial to Trump, uh, then I think she's going to come out on top. And obviously, the media is going to back her no matter what. And I'm not just trying to say, oh, all media are shills for the, for the Democrats. We've had moderators who are obviously Democratic leaning, or at least their network is, and they've handled it much more seamlessly and much better than these moderators did. But overall, it's not going to matter. It's, it's not going to matter because if you believe that the media apparatus, including Fox News, including MSNBC, is right and that they're doing the right thing and you can't question them whatsoever, then it's not, I'm going to be honest, this debate really doesn't matter because they have defined, both of those networks that I mentioned there, MSNBC, Fox News, have defined the candidates on their own terms before this debate. They will continue to define them after this debate. So I honestly don't think this debate will change that much, except for there will be more fodder for both candidates. But I think, honestly, there will be more fodder for Kamala Harris to use coming out of it. So thank you for joining me for this episode, this special episode, uh, with a little bit of debate analysis. I know the first part was a little bit more pungent. The last part was a little bit more ranty. So if you made it all the way to the end, I definitely appreciate it. Uh, thank you for everybody that tunes into it because, obviously, special edition, late night post. But with all that said, there's only one more thing to say. Stay safe. Don't die.